Hello everyone, my name is Ted Gray. I am the multimedia librarian at the Deerfield Public Library. And this is our 2022 Cut the Cable presentation. Um, I'm just gonna pretty much jump right into it because it's long. Uh, you will notice most of the uh, videos uh, were recorded earlier, or perhaps you won't notice. This is basically an update of last year's video. Enjoy. Okay, so, uh, first of all, I emailed everyone this PDF of the uh, handout for this class, and um, we're going to kind of go along with that. There's a lot more information in there that I will cover, but page two is, the headline is, Are We Really Cutting the Cable? And this is right off the bat kind of a, a fundamental question, um, and a lot of this stuff is confusing. There's going to be a lot of information I'm going to throw at you. And one of the confusing things right off the bat is, no, we are not, in fact, actually cutting the cable. Um, this whole thing where they call it cutting the cable is kind of a, a misnomer um, because you still need your internet connection. Um, as you can see from my little chart, um, I am assuming most of you are here because you are currently paying for uh, the triple play bundle is what the providers usually call it where they give you the internet connection a cable tv option and then the phone usually as well and in my experience when you sign up for these uh, bundles at first they're a nice affordable price usually like 99 dollars a month and that's great but then after a year, all of a sudden, those prices shoot up, and year after year, they go up and up and up and up to the point where all of a sudden you're finding yourself paying over $200 a month for all three of those things. So the idea is we want to try at least to uh, save a little money. Um, so you currently have uh, the three things from your internet provider, and once again, um, we're probably talking either AT&T or Comcast Infinity, they pretty much have a uh, monopoly, uh, it seems, in this area on uh, internet and cable TV service. Um, so you've got the three, we want to cut it down to just the one, which is the internet connection. So step one with cutting the cable is calling your current provider, or you might think about switching providers. Um, you might end up saving even more money that way. Um, sometimes it seems like when you go with the new new one, they give you more of a discount at first. Um, but yes, call your provider, drop the uh, cable TV and the phone portion of your bundle. All you want is your internet connection. Um, I also like to always point out, I am an actual cable cutter. I did this six or seven years ago, um, so a lot of this presentation is sort of a show and tell thing, and I like to be completely um, upfront and transparent about what I'm paying, um, so you get an idea of, you know, what this is all about, how much it may cost you. So. I uh, currently have the AT&T one gig fiber connection at my home and it costs me $90 a month. So right off the bat, that's kind of what we're talking about in terms of the potential savings. Um, you can go from, you know, over $200 for that bundle down to around $90 a month if you're just paying for the internet service. Of course, you're going to want other things. You want to watch your TV because you dropped your cable TV portion of your uh, bundle. And that's, you know, a lot of what we're going to talk about as well. Um, so uh, on to uh, the next step, which is uh, over the air TV. We'll start talking about that. All right. Um, over the air TV. Over the air TV uh, is sort of a new term, and I think it's kind of funny because, um, uh, as you can see from the, right here, I'm a little bit older, so I remember 
before the days of cable TV, even uh, when we used to have these things called TV antennas on our roof of our houses, and we only got, what, five stations? Um, but yes, I think people forget, a lot of people forget that TV antennas are actually still an option, and they're actually free. Um, or they're, they're very cheap and inexpensive. Um, in fact, you may actually have a TV antenna on your house now. I, uh, two houses ago, when we moved to our house in the city, there was a TV antenna on the roof. All we had to do was plug the TV into the antenna, and all of a sudden you've got about, gosh, it's actually a fair amount, 40, 50 local TV channels that you can get for free over the antenna. Um, you know, it sounds silly. Uh, I think, you know, when people got cable TV and the internet, you kind of forget that TV antennas are a thing, that you can actually use a TV antenna and, and get, you know, all the major networks, CBS, NBC, Fox, PBS, all those things for free. Um, in fact, when we moved to our current house, we actually paid someone, and you can do this, just go to Google and uh, type in the search box, TV antenna installation. You will find people who can do it for you. They will come to your house with little gadgets and, and point it towards uh, the city and figure out what strength antenna you need, point the antenna in the right way, set everything up for you. Now that, that you do have to pay for, obviously, but once it's paid for, you're done, you get bunches of TV channels for free. Um, there are also, you can also buy these newer digital antennas off of Amazon. Um, they're basically kind of square, flat things. You just pop up on the wall next to your TV. And those cost around, um, you can get them as cheap as $50. And I've heard that they actually work quite well in Deerfield. Um, so that's an option as well. So hey, look, there it is on our house. We paid a guy to come out and install a TV antenna. Uh, yeah, so they really do exist out in the wild still. You may check your house, as I said, and you may already have one on the roof that you can just plug your TV into. Okay, before we move on, I am going to do, I probably should have done this earlier, my official disclaimer. Uh, I am recording these videos in mid-April. This is one of those things uh, where everything is constantly changing. The prices change, the apps change, uh, names change. So everything I'm telling you could be wrong. Everything I'm telling you could be out of date. Uh, so I am just throwing that out there um, on almost every page of the PDF. Uh, that I sent you. You will see links at the bottom um, for most of the services and most of the things I'm talking about. If you click on those links, it should take you directly to the sites, which will have the uh, most current information. All right, so uh, next we're going to start talking about what we actually need to do this, um, to do the streaming stuff. Now, first of all, I always tell people, if you have bought a new TV, within the past, I don't know, two or three, five years, you may already have a streaming device in your TV. A lot of TVs that they have been selling recently are called smart TVs. A lot of them have some sort of streaming device built right into them. Um, so you may already have access to this stuff and, and maybe not even be aware of it. So you might check the manual for your TV and see if it's a smart TV and see if one of these things is already installed. Okay. Um, if you don't have a smart TV, you will need to get some sort of streaming device. Um, there are a couple different choices out there, a couple different options. Um, they range in price anywhere from $30 to $100. I'll go over kind of each of the uh, more popular ones and uh, advantages and disadvantages. Um, first, we have the Roku. Let's see, we can see the, there we go, Roku. These things are really small at this point. About the, 
I used to say the size of a hockey puck, now I'm going to say about the half the size of a hockey puck. Um, that basic Roku that I just showed you costs about $30 to buy, so it's, it's quite affordable. Uh, you can buy more expensive ones that cost uh, up to $99 that have fancy things like remote control. Um, advantages of the Roku, I would say, it's uh, just been, it's one of the streaming devices that's been around the longest. I think they've kind of got it down. Um, they work, they work real good. They work real well. Um, and they're affordable. So it's a, it's a great way to start streaming with the Rokus. Another option is the Apple TV products. Here's one right here. Um, these are a little more expensive. Uh, they run at, I think they currently run for $179. Um, like all Apple products, they're a little more expensive. Um, advantages of the Apple TV. Uh, if you are a big Apple user, if you've got a lot of Macs in your house, the Apple TV is really nice. You can do stuff like connect your phone or your um, uh, your Apple computers to the Apple TV device and do things like watch uh, photos or movies directly off your phone. Um, uh, it Like a lot of Apple products, however, I think what they do is they curate um, the apps you can use a little more. I think there are more um, stations, apps, and we'll talk about that a little bit, available on the Roku. Apple, like uh, Apple often does, they, they, um, they make sure they work properly on the Apple devices. So you may have a few less choices on the Apple TV, but you get all the major stuff that you would want. Um, it might be missing a few few things, but you'll be just fine with the Apple TV. I know the Apple TV also, there are certain deals you can get, like I'm pretty sure you get the um, new Apple TV Plus service free if you buy an Apple TV. So that is certainly an option. Another option are the uh, Amazon Fire uh, products. As you can see, this one has an HDMI port. You plug it directly into your TV. Um, advantages of the Amazon uh, Fire products. Um, they, again, uh, very affordable. You can get uh, the cheap ones for about $30. Uh, the more expensive ones, again, with the more fancy stuff like uh, voice control, those cost about $100. Um, the Amazon Fire products uh, do um, work with the Amazon Echo devices. So if you have Amazon Echo dots in your house and you do the, you know, hey Siri kind of stuff, or um, hey Alexa stuff, you can um, watch, you know, use those uh, Amazon Echo devices to control your TV. Um, kind of fancy stuff. Um, but yes, it can be done, um, and the Amazon Fire is the way to go if you want to go that way. So yes, you will need one of the streaming devices uh, if you want to cut the cable and basically watch stuff other than the local channels that you might be able to get over your um, TV antenna. Uh, and we will then explain next how these streaming devices work and what kind of stuff you can see on them. Okay, so first I thought I would I'm grab my trusty remote control here. I'm going to just give a little quick tour of, um, I have a Roku device hooked up to this TV. It's what I use every day, all day. Uh, we're going to give a little quick tour of what the main screen looks like and what you'll see. Um, the first thing to say, I always like to point out, almost all these things have a home button. Right there is the home button. Um, almost all these devices have some sort of button like that and that is basically how we get to the main menu if we click on that. Okay, so this is the uh, main screen you will see when you press the home button on a typical Roku device. Um, you'll see uh, on the left side here we've got some menu items. On the right side we have our apps. And if you have owned uh, any sort of smartphone over the past uh, few years, you know what apps are. Um, the smart, or uh, these streaming devices work a little differently than cable TV. On cable TV, we're used to um, basically scrolling through the channels. Um, the streaming devices, you download 
various apps. Uh, the apps are then what you go into to watch what you want to watch. Some apps let you watch TV, some apps let you watch movies. They all do slightly different things. Um, and part of the whole thing is you can uh, download or upload as many as you want. Um, every person does it a little differently, and that's one of the things about this is a little bit more a la carte. You can really decide, uh, you know, how you want to watch TV a little more. Uh, there are these items on the left side, uh, these menu items, and honestly, uh, we were talking about it here at home, we hardly use any of these. The home, yes, we use that. Uh, featured free, I've never used that. My feed, I've never used that. Movie store, I've never used that. Never. Search, we do use search sometimes. Search is actually a nice one. So let's say uh, you want to find out where something is on. Let's say you've heard of a TV show like, uh, let's say The Crown. You want to see how you can watch The Crown. So I'm going to type in The Crown. I'm surprised it hasn't shown up yet. The Crown. Where is, oh, there's The Crown. I see it now. So now we're going to click on The Crown, and it will tell me I can watch it on Netflix. Uh, so that's kind of nice. You can put in almost any movie, any TV show, and it'll tell you how you can watch it on one of these streaming devices, what app you would need. So that's kind of nice. We do use the search. Uh, the other thing you will use in this uh, menu are the streaming channels. Uh, this is how you um, add apps, add different streaming channels to your Roku device. And uh, you can see there are different categories here. This is featured. So all of these are what they're calling featured um, apps, all different ones. You can search through, you can read a little bit more about them, you can decide if you want to download them or not. Um, a new and updated, you know, we'll be talking about Paramount Plus, for instance, that's a brand new service. Uh, recommended, there's all sorts of stuff in here. Top free movies and TV, uh, that's a whole nother thing to point out. There are dozens of free apps that you can download and get free content, free TV shows, free movies. So you can actually buy one of these things, download all these free apps, and basically never pay a dime. So that's a whole nother way to uh, save money. Um, yeah, you can pay for the more uh, premium apps, as they're called, like HBO and Netflix, but you don't have to. There's a lot of free uh, content available. Quite honestly, there's probably enough free content available to keep you busy for the rest of your life. So that is definitely something to consider as well. Click the home button and go back to the home page. And uh, next, we're going to talk about streaming services and the various streaming live TV services that are out there. All right. So um, we have bought our streaming device. We've cut our cable. We no longer have cable TV, but we want to watch TV. So what do we do? Um, we want to have our local channels and we want to have our cable, TV, cable TV channels that we, we liked to watch. Um, so when I actually was doing this presentation six, seven years ago, there were not many good options for watching, um, TV. It was kind of interesting. Um, but about three, four years ago, a whole slew of new products arrived on the market called streaming, um, live TV services. And, um, there are about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five major ones available right now. They all have various prices. They all have various options. I can't talk about each one in great detail because um, I, I don't have them all. I only have one. And that is brings up one of, you know, again, like one of the things about all this. You have a lot of options. You have a lot of choices. Um, just these TV live streaming services, there are five different options. Each one is slightly different. Um, and, and yeah, they, so it's really kind of up to you what channels you watch, what 
what channels are important to you uh, to decide which one is the right one for you. Um, I have, I pay for YouTube TV. Uh, you will see that's the one on the right. It costs $65 a month. Um, and again, one of the issues about this stuff is the prices seem to always be going up. Um, whereas, uh, you know, when I was doing this five, six years ago, you could save a lot of money cutting the cable. I'm not sure how much money you can actually save these days because the prices keep going up. Um, which is something we will talk about. YouTube TV, when I first signed up for it, I believe was $45 a month. Not too bad. But then I think literally within the first month or two, it went up to $49.99. Then it went up to um, you know, $54, then $60, and now all of a sudden it's $65 a month. Um, so yes, the prices keep going up and up and up on these services. It's something, you know, I'll probably be bringing up again in this presentation. Um, let me quickly go through you know, a few of these services and, and sort of the advantages and disadvantages of each one. Um, AT&T TV, right off the bat, brings up one of the big questions, which is, what about the Cubs? I actually had someone ask me that question a few uh, presentations ago. I want to watch the Cubs. What about the Cubs? And I said, well, you just watch them on uh, NBC Sports Chicago like everybody else. And she said, no, they're on this new thing called the Marquee Network. So thank you, Cubs. You decided to create your own network and you decided to have licensing battles with all of the services because you want as much money as possible. Um, uh, this seems to be a common new thing among Major League Baseball teams, the Yankees did it first, and then the Dodgers, now the Cubs. Um, the problem is, if you want to watch the Cubs with one of these streaming services, AT&T TV is your only choice. It is the only streaming service that uh, shows the Cubs. None of the other ones do. So, if you want to watch the Cubs live on the Marquee Network, AT&T TV is your only choice. So keep that in mind. Um, FUBU. Next one, that's a new one. I literally know hardly anything about it uh, other than it's $60 a month and it's supposed to have more channels than any of the other services. So it's supposed to be a great option. Um, um, Hulu, Hulu Plus Live TV. Ah, oh, the Hulu issue. This is another one that's really confusing. Hulu is actually two different services, and we'll talk about that when we get to Hulu. Um, you can... Basically, Hulu has an on-demand uh, service that costs uh, about $7 a month, uh, where they have their own content. And then they have this other service called Hulu Plus Live TV that has all the TV channels and it costs $65 a month. Um, you can buy either one or both. Um, again, totally up to you. Um, but Hulu uh, Plus Live TV is a nice option if you want all your TV. Sling TV. Sling TV is... Uh, a nice option in the sense that it is the cheapest one out there um, at about $35 a month. Um, so it's a really good affordable way to get into this. Um, Sling TV, the issue with Sling TV is Sling has none of the local channels. Most of these other services, in fact all of the other services have pretty much all of the local channels. Uh, CBS, ABC, NBC, Fox. Um, um, Sling TV has none of that. It's Sling TV pretty much just has the um, cable TV uh, stations that you like, like TNT and Bravo and, and BBC and, and MSNBC, that sort of stuff. Um, but Sling has an uh, work around around that, uh, which we will talk about. It is called Locast TV. I think I mentioned it uh, during the antenna portion, and I will show that off. Uh, you can get all the local TV uh, channels on that. 
So Sling TV, in fact, may be a good option. And I am, in fact, uh, considering changing to Sling TV myself um, because YouTube TV keeps on going up in price. Um, YouTube TV. Now, I, in fact, one of the fun things about this is I try to make it a little bit of a show and tell. Hello there. So I may have mentioned the word low-cast a few times about watching uh, local TV. Well, it is gone. It no longer exists. Uh, so pretty much the uh, live uh, antennas are the only way you can watch local TV and definitely still the only way you can get Channel 9 WGN. Also, coming up next, I'll be talking about uh, the AT&T Now service. It is now... it changed its name to Direct TV. I'm not even quite sure how you say it. So um, otherwise all the information is the same. Uh, Direct TV has the marquee networks and the Cubs. Uh, so uh, we continue on. Okay, let's do a quick tour of YouTube TV, a streaming live TV service. And this is, as I said, supposed to basically replace the cable TV portion of your uh, triple play bundle. It's going to have all the local channels as well as all the cable TV channels. Um, let's see, you'll see when we log in here, we've got a home page. Um, this basically keeps kind of track of what you've been watching recently, comes up with suggestions, um, which is, I suppose, another thing I should point out. Um, you can even see this little T over here. YouTube TV basically connects to your Google account. You will need a, a Gmail account to get this set up. Um, it works great actually with Chrome on your computer, uh, which is a whole nother thing. Uh, almost all of these services, once you sign up, they will work on your TV through your streaming device, but then they will also, there will also be an app that you can use on your phone. So you can watch all this TV stuff on your phone as well. And all of these services pretty much work on your computer as well. Um, YouTube TV in particularly works really well on a computer if you were using Chrome, I've noticed. So um, now another thing about all that, I suppose, is you're signing up with your Gmail account, you're watching all this stuff on YouTube TV, almost certainly the Alphabet Corporation is keeping track of all that and building a huge file on you and keeping all that information. Uh, just something to be aware of, but that's sort of life in the modern internet age as well. Um, so yes, the home page with suggestions. Um, then we also have the library. The library is pretty neat because the library is where it has all your uh, all the shows you've recorded on the DVR. And as I mentioned, YouTube TV is nice in that it has an unlimited DVR. You can record as many things as you want and it will save them uh, basically forever, as far as I can tell. Um, it breaks it up into different things. I've got all my TV shows that I, I record. I've got a huge collection of movies now at this point. All of these are movies that have been on. I've recorded them um, and added them to my library, and I can watch them at any time. Um, sports. And we'll get into sports later, but I made the Chicago White Sox. You'll see a certain few teams here. I've got my White Sox. I've got my Bears. I've got my uh, Illini football. That's where I went to graduate school to get my library degree. Um, I have it set up to tape all the White Sox games, Bears games, and Illini football games. And, you know, they're all in my library. I can watch them at any time. It's pretty nice. Um, but what we really wanted to show you here is the live TV portion because that's uh, basically what this is all about. And you'll see the interface looks a lot like what you're probably familiar with with uh, your c typical uh, cable TV. Um, service. Um, then, you know, that's basically what we're replacing with this. Um, you can see it's pretty much got all the, it's got all the local channels at the beginning here, um, except channel 9. I think we talked about that with the low casting. Um, it does have PBS. Uh, 
YouTube TV is the only one of these streaming services that seems it has the local PBS channels, so that's nice. And then it has all the, the cable TV uh, channels that you're used to as well. Um, and if we go ahead and click into, let's find something interesting. Hey, Dino Ranch, that sounds great. Um, if we click into any of these shows, you'll see it's pretty much just like good old cable TV. Uh, it does have commercials, just like regular TV. Um, you do have a few options uh, that aren't necessarily for cable. Um, I can add uh, closed captions to anything at any time. And it's really easy to go ahead and um, add things to your library or take them right out. Um, if you add them to your library, it's just going to start recording them and putting them on that DVR. Uh, so it's super easy to do that. Um, yeah, uh, pretty simple, easy to use interface. Um, that is pretty much it for YouTube TV. Hi there. Uh, one more quick update. Uh, FUBU. FUBU now has the Marquee Network as well. So FUBU and the Direct TV are the two uh, live TV streaming services that you can watch the Cubs on. Very important 2022 update. All right, we are going to talk about on-demand services now. On-demand services are a little different than uh, live TV. It's a little different than the cable TV uh, service you're used to. And in my opinion, it's what makes uh, the streaming devices and cutting the cable uh, so appealing. Um, the on-demand services are great. And uh, a lot of them are very affordable. Um, once again, however, it's a very a la carte thing each of these services pretty much does cost money. If you end up getting every single one out there and end up paying for every single one, you're going to end up paying uh, more than what you would have paid for your cable TV bundle in the first place. You're, you could easily pay $250, $300 a month if you get everything. So nobody does that. Maybe the Kardashians do that, but no, nobody does that. Um, so again, it's very a la carte. There are a bunch of different services out there. It's pretty much a choice, you know, what you are interested in, what sort of shows you're interested in, and what services you, you get. Um, the on-demand services are different than watching traditional cable TV in, in that they are more like libraries. Um, you will click on a service and you will have many different TV shows, movies that you can watch, and then you, you watch them uh, at your own pace. So things aren't on at a certain time, like cable TV. You find a show or a movie you want to watch, and you watch it whenever you want to watch it, uh, which is really nice, and that's uh, why we call it On Demand. Uh, so we'll do a little bit of show and tell and show you a few of the On Demand services now. Okay, so... The first one, first on-demand service I'm going to talk about is probably the most popular one. It's sort of the king of all these things, and it's in a funny way like how this whole streaming thing started. I remember Netflix when I used to get little red envelopes in the mail with a DVD in it. Um, and then Netflix converted over to a digital thing, and you could stream the movies instead. And it kind of, I, I want to say in a funny way, I think Netflix really kind of started this whole thing. Um, it's, in my opinion, a great service. It's still very affordable. It has gone up in price. I believe when it started, I think I was paying $4.99 a month. It is now up to $9 a month, but that's still not too bad. We are going to click into Netflix and show you what Netflix is, is all about. Okay, now let's show off Netflix. Netflix, the uh, granddaddy in a lot of ways of the uh, on-demand streaming services. Um, and uh, we'll get in here in a little bit. You will see it is a huge library. Um, I think I mentioned this, you can get uh, different logins for everybody in your family. You'll keep track of what you personally are watching. Then, our main Netflix screen. 
first of all, right off the bat, they are almost constantly adding new things. Almost, it seems like almost every day, Netflix adds new shows, new movies. Um, they also take out things. The, the library is always changing a little bit. Um, but yes, we have new movies, new TV shows. We also have older material that will just show up. Um, Saving Private Ryan, for some reason, seems to be everywhere these days. Um, it keeps track of what you were watching before, so you can just pop in and start watching uh, a show again. Um, trending now, these are the shows that are popular on Netflix. We've got all sorts of uh, different categories, um, TV shows, we've got their new releases, um, we've got movies, we have Netflix originals, which brings up something. Um, there are a whole bunch of things that are on Netflix that are only on Netflix that you can only watch on Netflix that are at this point being nominated for awards like the Emmys and the Oscars. In fact, this year uh, at the Oscars, there are a whole bunch of shows that are on Netflix, uh, only on Netflix, that are nominated for Academy Awards. Um, uh, I have a little list here of, of uh, shows and movies that are Netflix originals that you can only watch on Netflix. Uh, let's see, so here we go. The Queen's Gambit, Ozark, The Crown, The Five Bloods, The Eurovision Movie, uh, Hillbilly Elegy, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Mank, My Octopus Teacher, Trial of the Chicago Seven, and The White Tiger. Almost all of those have been nominated for some sort of award, and almost all of them are only available on Netflix. Um, one more thing I think that is great about Netflix that is well worth knowing is that um, all of the shows are uh, have no commercials. Um, all commercial-free, so that is really, really nice as well. Um, and an affordable price, $9 a month. I'm sure it will go up, but it's still a pretty good deal. So that is Netflix. All right, hello. If you're really observant, you might notice that the screen changed here a little bit. I actually switched Roku devices. Um, we are now looking at a Roku that you can check out from the Deerfield Public Library, and we'll talk about that a little bit in a little bit. Um, but I want to show you Hulu. And as I mentioned, this is a little confusing because there are two different Hulus. There's the Hulu live TV service where you can watch live TV. This is Hulu, um, the standalone product, the on-demand service, where uh, much like Netflix, it has its own collection of TV shows and movies. Um, Hulu's interesting in that you have two different options. Uh, you can pay uh, $6 a month and get the service with ads, so it will have commercials. And I have to say, as someone who has used Hulu, um, the commercials on Hulu will drive you insane um, because they tend to, I think they contract out um, to companies and you know, do like a Hulu exclusive where they show the same, basically four different commercials over and over and over and over and over again. You will get so tired of that emu insurance thing. Um, but yes, uh, they've got, well, you can kind of see up at the top here, they've got TV shows that you can watch. Um, some of which are from networks uh, like ABC, CBS, NBC, some of which are older classics. Um, again, just like Netflix, all of these you can just jump in and watch any episode you want, an entire season, all at once, um, on demand, whenever you want. Uh, Hulu also has some excellent movies as well, a great movie collection. Um, in fact, there's one of the movies, uh, Nomadland. Um, yeah, and again, like each of these services seems to have 
particular movies and TV shows that none of the others do, some of which are really good and, you know, uh, nominated for awards. In fact, here are two on Hulu. We've got Nomadland and then The United States versus Billie Holiday, both of which are nominated for Academy Awards this year, both of which you can only watch on Hulu. Um, here's a little tip, and uh, I like to throw this out to people. One of the things about all these services is you can join and then quit at any time. And in fact, they make it very, very easy to do that. It's not like cable TV. When you try to quit uh, cable, you're going to have to talk to some person in the customer service department and they're going to try to sell you stuff. No, these services are really easy to turn on and off. You can just go to a web page and say cancel, click a button, and you're done. Um, all of these services, when you start, you will put in a credit card number. Um, almost all of these services also, and I forgot to mention this, have a seven-day free trial period. Some have a month free trial. So my tip is, if there are certain shows, movies that you want to watch on one of these services, you don't have to keep on paying month after month. I know people, for instance, who decide they just want to watch a couple things on one of these services. They pay for just one month, they watch their stuff, and then they quit. Um, so that's another way to think about saving some money. Um, if you decide you really want to watch Game of Thrones, for instance, you can just pay for the HBO app for one month, binge on, on Game of Thrones, watch it every night, and then when you're done, stop paying, cancel the service, you're done. Um, so that is something to think about um, and consider, uh, which is, again, a little different than cable TV. So you might consider, you know, paying for one month of Hulu for $6 um, and uh, watch these movies that are uh, nominated for the Academy Awards and then quit. You can do that. It's your choice. Um, oh, and the I suppose I should also mention with Hulu. I think I mentioned that you can pay $6 a month and get it with ads. Um, the same ads over and over again, which will drive you insane. Or you can actually pay $12 a month and get it ad-free, which is a nice option. Um, so something to consider. Hulu. Okay, so next we are going to talk about Amazon. Amazon Prime. Again, as I keep on saying, some of this stuff is a little bit confusing. This is one that's a little bit confusing in terms of the price. Is it... Are you paying for it or is it free? I kind of consider it free. I think our family would pay for Amazon Prime if we got this or not. We get a lot of stuff delivered to us from Amazon and we found it very nice during the holidays. Um, one of the benefits of paying for Amazon Prime that I think people, some people aren't aware of is there is an app, a streaming app called Prime Video, where if you pay for Amazon Prime, you will get this access to this app for free. Um, and Amazon Prime, just like Netflix, just like Hulu, is pretty nice service. And, um, you know, if you're paying for Amazon Prime, you might as well use it. Okay, so let's go into Amazon Prime Video. Here we are. And like all these services, or many of them, uh, you can have different logins for different people, keeps track of what you're watching. Um, so first of all, I don't know how easily you can see this. All these little things that have the little Prime and check on it means that you can watch them for free. And uh, as you can see, we've got a mix of TV shows, original movies, um, the new Coming to America sequel is only available on Amazon. Um, Amazon Prime, Sound of Metal, uh, has been nominated for several Academy Awards. Small Axe, another great series on Amazon Prime that has gone up for some awards. So same sort of thing, it's got all sorts of stuff in here. Um, yeah, all sorts of stuff. Movies, TV shows, um, a lot of content. Um, 
one of the other things, and let's see if I can find an example of that, um, you can rent movies. This is another way to perhaps think about saving money. Uh, you do not have to pay for Amazon Prime to do this. You can get this app. If you don't have Amazon Prime, you can't watch the, the stuff with the check mark. But if you want, you can go in and pay for individual movies or TV shows. You can either rent them or you can buy them. Um, if you rent them, uh, usually you have about 48 hours to watch them. Uh, it's very inexpensive to rent movies and TV shows on Amazon. I want to say 99 cents, $1.99. Um, you can also buy uh, things as well. You can buy TV series, you can buy movies. If you buy something, it'll just be added to your library and you can watch it anytime you want. So that is another potential way to save money. Some people do that. If you don't watch much TV, if you don't watch many movies, if you don't think you need to sign up for any of these services, you can always just put the Amazon Prime app on your streaming device, go in and just buy a TV series, buy a movie, or rent rent a TV series, rent a movie, and uh, just watch that. And if that's enough for you, that's great. Uh, you'll save money that way. So that is Amazon Prime. Okay, so as I mentioned, Seems like things are always changing. Um, there are new services. It seems like they're all coming along all the time now. And one of the new, newest and most popular services out there is Disney Plus. Um, I believe it started in uh, November of 2019. Um, it has grown in, uh, well, what would that be, about a year and a half, to 100 million subscribers. So that's pretty fast. A Disney Corporation, um, yeah. Um, it's another pretty affordable service, $7.99 a month. Um, it also has a bundle that includes that Hulu On Demand service we were talking about and ESPN for $14 a month. So uh, another option. Okay, so this is Disney Plus. Let's pop in there. And the first thing you'll see is that uh, it's not just Disney. Disney, the corporation, has bought a bunch of other uh, corporations at this point, as you may know. So it's taking a little while to get in there. So we not only have all of the Disney stuff on here, you will see we also have Pixar, the uh, entire Marvel Universe, all of the Star Wars stuff. And then just thrown in for a little bonus, we get a bunch of National Geographic uh, documentaries. Um, yeah, so basically Disney, you get uh, pretty much the entire catalog of uh, all of the original Disney movies. Um, you've got the live action stuff. Um, it's basically pretty much all in here. All the new live action versions, um, specials. Um, oh, some of them, it doesn't have all of them because I know some of the deep catalog, but it's got a bunch of the like 60s live action stuff, like the old fashioned stuff. So pretty much, Almost the entire Disney catalog is in here. Um, but then it also has all of the Pixar catalog, including the shorts. And it also has the current uh, Marvel universe as well. Now this is nice because they are putting new content up here, new shows. Um, so it's not just old stuff, you will also get some new stuff on the Disney channel as well. Um, and these are actually kind of, I, I said most of these shows, the whole seasons drop at once. Disney's a little different. It's been actually, it's more like kind of old school TV where um, for these new series like uh, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, WandaVision, The Mandalorian, which is another popular one on Disney, when those were coming out, they would release uh, the new episodes uh, each week. So it was more like old fashioned TV. You would keep up with them that way. It was kind of fun, actually. A little different in the streaming world. Um, but that is Disney, as I said, very affordable, starting at $7.99 a month.
All right, um, if you've been kind of following along on the handout, um, we are on the last page here. We've got three on here, HBO Max, Apple TV, and Paramount Plus. As I think I mentioned, nobody pays for all of these services, you, uh, or, um, you know, because they're going to add up. I do not have Apple TV Plus. I have heard Apple TV Plus has a lot of great stuff on it. I've also heard that um, if you buy almost any Apple um, piece of hardware, whether it be a phone or a computer, they're going to give you Apple uh, TV Plus for free. Um, Paramount. Plus is the very, very, very latest uh, streaming service. And as I think I mentioned, all the stuff is constantly changing. A month ago, Paramount Plus was CBS All Access, I think is what they called it. Yeah, CBS All Access. They decided to change the name to Paramount Plus. Um, it's got, like, all the CBS stuff. It's got also... Um, um, BET, Comedy Central, Nickelodeon, um, Paramount Plus is also, they're trying to uh, make it pretty much the hub of Star Trek. So it's got all the um, old Star Trek shows, but it's also got um, a few, again, new original content shows that you can only watch on Paramount Plus. Um, so if you want to watch uh, Star Trek Discovery, the new episodes, or Picard, Paramount Plus is the on-demand service you might be interested in. Um, I do currently have HBO Max. And again, I think I mentioned, you know, like Apple TV, you want to see, there are some of these deals out, out there. We didn't know, we, we had our AT&T fiber connection for, I think, two years before we realized that if we read the fine print, um, we got HBO Max for free. So we recently installed HBO Max. Normally it costs $15 a month, um, but uh, uh, we got it for free, so we added it in here. Once again, like all these other services, it seems, they have certain things that you can only see on their service, like... You have the new Godzilla vs. Kong movie on HBO Max. Um, the new TV show Southside. We've got the full version of Justice League. A Lovecraft Country, real good show. Um, again, we've got TV shows. We've got movies. We've got new stuff that's always added. Uh, we've got HBO series like um, uh, the John Oliver show. Um, Bill Mayer, um, all of these you can watch on uh, HBO Max. Um, they've got a ton of movies. So, yes, uh, I guess my point is um, yet another service. You can pay for them, um, but read the fine print. A lot of these things, like when you bought, when you sign up for a new uh, internet service, you may find that you get Netflix free for a year, or when you buy a new phone, or when you buy a new computer. Check what the deals are. Check what the fine print is. You may find that um, you can make all of this more affordable by getting stuff for free. <laughs> so definitely pay attention. All right, so... As I mentioned, I like to be completely transparent in this presentation, so uh, as I am a cable cutter, so you can get an idea of uh, the actual costs for an actual cable cutter, so you can decide if you want to do this yourself. Um, I've got a chart up here showing exactly what I am paying uh, per month for all this stuff. Um, so. Um, you kind of see all the apps here. I put down on a little chart what each one costs per month. Um, so the base, I suppose, is the internet connection. As I mentioned, I have that uh, um, one gig fiber connection from AT&T. That costs me $90 a month. Um, we have YouTube TV, $65 a month. Netflix, $9 a month. Disney Plus. Um, now, I mentioned I think that it costs $9 a month. We actually got a deal when it first came out. They offered a deal where you could um, pay, I think it was $125 a month 
for or a flat $125 fee that would pay for three years right up front. We took advantage of that. So our cost for Disney Plus is actually less than $4. It's actually about $3.80. Rounded it up to $4. $4. MLB TV works out to be $11 a month. All of the other apps, though, um, as you can see, Amazon Prime, HBO Max, free. YouTube. YouTube is just a free internet service. You can get it on your computer. Free. Canopy, Hoopla, those are both, again, free apps that you can download. Those are connected to the Deerfield Public Library. You would need a Deerfield Public Library card um, to access them. But uh, we have content available for, from the Deerfield Public Library through those apps that you can check out for free with your Deerfield Public Library card. So, yet again, another option. You can download these apps on your streaming device for free. You have your Deerfield Public Library. We have a whole library of movies and TV shows that you can check out for free on those apps. Um, I've got the CBS News app, uh, just because it's got, it's actually a pretty nice news app. You can get local news from all around the country from various CBS outlets. I like that. Uh, and then finally, that Locast app. Um, I suppose another thing to point out is um, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of apps out there. You can download as many or as few as you want. I, in fact, used to have many, many, many more apps on my um, Roku here at home. Um, but I realized I wasn't watching a lot of the channels, and I kind of went through at one point and basically said, gee, have I actually watched anything on this in the past year? And if I had not watched anything on that particular app in the past year, I deleted it. So I really kind of cleaned it up, uh, kept it down to really just the ones I actually watched stuff on. Um, but yes, you can see, and I think this is kind of typical, there's some that you're going to pay for, there are a bunch you can get for free. Um, it's kind of a mix. This is my particular mix, what I've decided, what our family has decided in terms of like the apps we choose. Every person is different, and I think that's actually one of the things that makes this whole cable cutting thing kind of nice, is everyone's different. Everyone has different interests. It is a little more a la carte, where you can decide what apps you are going to install um, or not install, you know, based on your own personal choices. Um, you know, as you can see, we're up to, I think it's $179 a month. Um, so, as I said, the prices keep going up and up and up and up and up. We used to pay much less than that. Um, it's still cheaper than the um, than the uh, triple play bundles, um, you know, that we were paying to, to, to $230, 240 for, but it's not that much cheaper. Um, and that's really changed uh, over the past five, six years. This stuff used to be just so much cheaper when I first started doing it, um, but the corporations keep jacking up the prices. Um, so it is not as affordable as it once was. Um, I believe that you still can save some money. I personally believe that um, this streaming stuff, there's just so much great content on um, the platforms like Netflix and Amazon Prime and Hulu that you just can't get anywhere else. Um, you almost, you know, if you want to watch some of the current stuff that's, you know, nominated for the Academy Awards and the Emmys and stuff, you almost have to do this. Um, so, all in all, I do believe, I, I'm still very, very happy that I cut the cable years ago. I don't miss cable TV. Um, but yes, the pricing is starting to become an issue. Um, you definitely don't save as much money as you used to. You have to be careful. If you download too many of these apps, if you pay for too many of these services, you can easily pay more than what you were paying for your cable TV bundle. So a lot of this is doing research. As I mentioned, a lot of these services have free trial periods. I think it's totally worth it. Sign up for the free trials. Check 
out the different apps. See which ones you like. See which ones you don't like. See which ones offer the channels you want. Um, and then just make sure you yeah, cancel uh, the ones that you don't want before the free trial period is up, and, and you'll be fine. Um, yeah, it's, I actually think it's a little bit of fun doing the research, figuring out what stuff you want. Um, and it really does open up a whole new world of, of content for you. So, yes, I do think, all in all, it is very, very much worth it in the end. All right, very quickly on the uh, cost update. Um, my chart has now been updated. We uh, got a deal on um, Cyber Monday. Uh, when was that? Around the holidays. We saw a deal where we could get Hulu for a year for $1 a month. Um, so, again, kind of look for those deals. Take advantage of them when you can. Um, I think a dollar a month for Hulu sounds just great. So we went ahead and did that. All right, something else I always like to mention uh, during this program um, that I think not everyone is aware of. You can check out one of these streaming devices from the Deerfield Public Library uh, yourself and try it out with the Deerfield Public Library card. Um, we actually pay for some of these services like Netflix and Hulu uh, and Disney um, and Acorn, which is a whole other uh, service. That Acorn offers um, British TV content, TV shows and movies. Uh, we pay for all of those services. On the Deerfield Public Library, Roku's, you can check out one of these Roku's. We've got everything you need in here. The, the cables and the, the HDMI cable to hook it up to your TV. The little Roku device. We've got uh, we've got instructions on how to set everything up and um, uh, you know instructions for some of the various apps. We've got a little channel guide that shows all the ch channels we've got on our Deerfield Public Library Roku's. Um, so yes. Very much. If you're interested in trying out this whole streaming uh, thing, I always suggest to people, check out a Deerfield Public Library Roku. Take it home. Try it out. See what you think. You know, connect it to your TV. Get a little bit comfortable with how it all works. Um, another money-saving tip. I do know that certain people just check these things out every few weeks. They watch what Netflix shows they want to watch, they watch what they want to watch on Disney and Hulu, um, return it, check it out again a few weeks later. You, you know, again, you don't have to pay for any of these things at home. You can check out one of these things from the Deerfield Public Library and save a lot of money that way. So another option to think about. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, one of the questions I often get is uh, how is the quality of service? How does it compare to cable? And I would say this. Um, all this streaming stuff depends on your internet connection. So just like anything with the internet, um, if the, your internet connection is slow that day or sluggish or you're having problems, you're going to have problems with all the streaming stuff as well. And it definitely seems to happen more on the holidays. I've noticed um, uh, Christmas, for instance, New Year's Day, when a lot of people are home, it seems like the internet gets bogged down and uh, the, the streaming stuff gets a little bogged down too as well. So that is um, the answer to that question. Hello everyone. Uh, I know this is going long. Thank you for your patience. I just thought of a couple more important points that I really should cover before we get to the questions because they may very well be a question. I forgot to mention, first very, very important point, these streaming devices. You will need one for every TV. Uh, you will need a separate one of these for every TV in your house. Now, most of the services you can share over four devices, so unless you have more than four TVs in your house, this shouldn't be a problem. Uh, you basically set up the other ones with the same apps, log in with the same stuff, you'll have your same stuff, you can move from room to room and it'll remember what you were watching and it's all good. Um, the other thing that I like to mention also as well, um, these little things are great if you have a second home or if you travel. All you have to do is unplug it, pop it in your suitcase, bring it with you, 
plug it into the TV wherever you go. Uh, all you have to do is connect to the wireless network in your new location. And once again, you're ready to go, which is a really great advantage of these things as well. That's it. So thank you for your patience. And now we can get on to any questions you might have. Ha, ha, ha.